Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the HJC C10 helmet. If you want proof that you don't need to spend a fortune to get a decent helmet, then in my opinion, here it is. HJC's C10 is their entry-level full-face helmet and it covers off all the basics and it costs less than 100 quid as we record this. There are some luxuries missing and there are a couple of bits that some riders will consider almost essential, I think, but it's a full-face lid that meets the new ECE 2206 safety standard so you can have confidence in its performance. As you'd probably expect for this money, the shell is made from polycarbonate, but the relatively stripped back nature of the C10 means it's actually quite light. This size medium C10 came in on our scales at 1518 grams, which is pretty good for a plastic shelled lid. There are chin and there are top vents. The chin one scoops air up through the top of the chin bar and out onto the inner surface of the visor. This is a pretty important vent because keeping mist off the visor is essential on this. There's no pin lock insert. I'll get onto that in a bit more detail in a moment. The top vents are two sliders that reveal holes on either side to allow air to enter the lid. That air can then travel through channels in the EPS impact liner and escape through two outlets at the rear. I found the venting on this helmet to be okay. The chin one doesn't direct air towards the rider directly, it all goes onto the visor. So there's no real cooling effect to be felt from that. The two up top are relatively good, though it's worth knowing that plastic shelled helmets in general don't offer the same strength of ventilation that you can get with a fiber shelled helmet. Though, by the same token, the venting in this helmet is probably no worse than in some plastic helmets that cost twice as much money. So, let's cover that new visor then. It's a new fitment. It's the HJ34P for the visor spotters out there. And the change on it's very, very easy. You pull the lever back and pull the visor away to release it. You line up the tabs, push the visor against the helmet and it refits there. There's no need for a dedicated how-to video with this helmet. It's got several small steps as it lowers on the mechanism and then there's a more secure cracked position that gives a gap of around 10 millimeters for airflow. The visor is ready for a pin lock insert. There are pins and a recess on the inner surface for that insert to sit in, but the insert does cost extra. As we record this, it's £29.99 for the insert and there's a choice of a clear or a high contrast yellow tint. If you do go for the pin lock, a nice touch is that you can adjust the tension easily with a small screwdriver. Most budget lids like this have pressed in pins and if you want to adjust it, you've got to press them out and then push them back in again to adjust the tension of your insert. But thankfully, that's not the case with this one. I wore this lid without the pin lock because I couldn't get my hands on one at the time. I mostly wore this helmet in good weather and it stayed clear, the visor, throughout. If there was a bit of moisture in the air, then opening the vent would clear the mist and even just bringing it to this cracked position definitely got it. If it did rain, then it suffered misting, but it wasn't as bad as I expected. So I think that chin vent must do a pretty good job. If a pin lock is one thing that's missing from this helmet, then the other main absence really is the lack of an internal sun visor. That is something to consider before you buy, as one of those can be handy, especially if you're commuting to work and then you find yourself riding in low sun quite a lot. As we record this, HJC's C70 is the next helmet up in the range, and that one does have a sun visor. As we record this, there are clearance deals that make the C70 well worth a look if you want a lid with a sun visor. Anyway, back to the C10 and its interior. Again, there's nothing fancy with it, but it's comfortable and it's effective. It uses the same fabric covering throughout the liner. There's no promise of anything to wick away sweat or any antimicrobial treatments to fend off whiff but I found it an absolutely fine place to stick my head for an hour or so at a time. The lining is all removable, so you can wash it if it does get a bit whiffy, and the same goes for the chin curtain. Now, pulling that out might also help bring in some cooling air and also help keep the visor clear, though the ride will probably get a bit noisier if you do that. The strap fastener for the C10 is a micrometric buckle, just as it is in pretty much every helmet around this price mark. Behind the padding in there, there are recesses for intercom speakers. They're pretty generous recesses, and I found even the 40 millimeter speakers from a Cardo pack talk unit would comfortably sit inside those recesses. There's no provision for an official HJC intercom, but what that means is you've got the freedom to fit whatever you like, and that I think will appeal to a lot of riders. I think the majority of intercoms will fit quite easily to this lid, although with some it will make a slicker fitment if you use the self-adhesive mount to put it on the shell here, rather than clamping the unit to the shell. 
Okay then, sizing, approvals and prices. The C10 covers a wide range of sizes from triple extra small up to double XL, which covers from 50 centimeters up to 63 centimeters. This helmet replaces the old CLY helmet in HJC's range, which was for younger riders and those with small heads. There are four shell sizes for this range of helmets, which is a very good range for a helmet costing this money. The smallest shell covers helmet sizes triple XS and double XS. Extra small and small share a shell. Medium and large also share, and then so do XL and double XL. So if you're relatively new to motorcycling and motorcycle lids, all that means is that you won't end up with a helmet that's got a large external size and lots of padding inside that's put there just to make it small enough on the inside to fit your head. The C10 is approved to the latest ECE 2206 safety standard for the road and it's also ACU gold, so you can use it on track, which is good to see. There's no sharp rating as we record this though. If one is published, then we'll add the details in the description below. As for price, plain colors are £89.99 as we record this, graphics are £99.99, and then there's one racer rep at the moment for Fabio Quartararo. By the time racer tax is added, that helmet design is £119.99. Okay, my feelings on this helmet are generally pretty positive. Personally, I prefer a helmet to have a pinlock insert and a sun visor, as I find they're both essential really for riding in all conditions, which is what I've got to do. But not everyone is the same as me. Some people don't even fit the pin lock that came with their helmet and they never seem to suffer visor mist in. I wish I could say the same. If you're happy to splash out on a tinted visor, then the lack of a sun visor won't matter to you either. For riding in okay weather with a tinted visor available, I would be perfectly happy with an HJC C10 helmet. Helmets further up the HJC range will have more comfortable liners, they'll have better venting, and a superior finish, but stuff like that all costs money. If you just need something decent for a reasonable price, then this helmet will do that job. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the HJC C10 helmet, but if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.